Good morning everyone. In this video, I would like to discuss a question from stiffness method which was asked in APJ Abdul Kalam Technological University examination and the steps that I have followed here is strictly based on the scheme of examination. Hope it will be helpful for the students. So let us start. These are the 10 steps that you should follow in order to analyze a frame structure by using stiffness method. The first step is to calculate kinematic indeterminacy and then you have to assign the system coordinate, then assign element coordinates. After that, you can calculate fixed end moment and form displacement transformation matrix. And the sixth step is to form element stiffness matrix, K star. Then on the seventh step, you have to develop stiffness matrix that can be developed by using the equation K is equal to A transpose into K star into A. Then we will develop a force matrix and a displacement matrix. And finally, the last step is to develop element forces or the calculate element forces. So let us see the question. The question is, analyze a given portal frame by using stiffness method. Take EI constant. So this question was from BTEC supplementary examination, which was conducted on September 2020 by APJ Abdul Karam Technological University. So in order to analyze this frame, the first step is to calculate kinematic indeterminacy. And we know how to calculate kinematic indeterminacy of a frame structure that is by using the equation dk is equal to 3j minus m plus c where j is number of joints here we have four joints a b c and d so the number of joints j is equal to 4 and m is the members number of members we have three members a b as the first member b c second member and c d third member so number of members are three and c is the number of constraints here at a and d we have two fixed supports so the number of constraints are three plus three which is equal to six so i am applying these values into the equation dk is equal to 3j minus m plus c and you will get the answer as three since this structure is a space structure a sway frame. A sway frame means it will sway to any direction. Since from this figure we can see that the load is applying in the direction towards down right side, this structure frame structure will sway towards right. So we don't have to reduce any degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom will be equal to 3 itself. So the stri structure is kinematically indeterminate to 3 degree. Okay, the second step is to assign system coordinates. So if we have 3 kinematic indeterminacy, then the number of system coordinates will also will become 3. So we will assign 3 system coordinates at B and C. And the first system coordinate is the delta or displacement at B, then rotation at B, and the third system coordinate is rotation at C. So we have three freedom, three degrees of freedom, and they are one, two, and three at B and C. Now moving to the third step that is to assign element coordinates, we know every member of this frame structure will have two element coordinates, one star, two star, three star, four star, five star and six star. So we have a total of six element coordinates. Now in order to calculate the fixed end moment, we know we are going to calculate fixed end moment in order to convert the values of loads which will be acting other than nodal points. But in this figure, it is clear that all the loads are acting 
only at the nodal points there is only one load that is 8 kN which is acting at B since it is acting at the B joint itself it is acting at the node so the fixed end moment calculation is not necessary in this question even though uh, if we have to find out we can see that there is no loads acting in between the members so the fixed end moment will be zero so the second next step is calculation of displacement transformation matrix so how to develop a displacement transformation matrix displacement transformation matrix is a matrix which relates member deformation and nodal displacement so in this structure we have three system coordinates and at every system coordinate when i apply a unit displacement there will be some member deformation occur in each members in order to find out the member deformation at every element coordinates of these member we can calculate displacement transformation matrix so we have here six element coordinates one star two star three star four star five star and six star and we have three system coordinates one two and three here the one is displacement and 2 is a rotation and 3 is a rotation at C. So when I apply a unit displacement at 1, what will be the member deformation which will develop at each element coordinate that is 1 star, 2 star, 3 star, 4 star and 5 star, 6 star. So when I apply a unit displacement in the direction of first system coordinate 1, the member deformation developed will be minus 1 by length of the member that is minus 1 by length of the AB is 4 minus 1 by 4 at 1 star and minus 1 by 4 at 2 star and if I apply a unit displacement at B the member BC which is a B member since it will not have any displacement because in matrix method we are neglecting the actual deformation so the deformation to the member BC is negligible or it is neglected in this method since it is applying since the displacement is applying parallel to this member BC we can say there won't be any member deformation occur so at 3 star and 4 star the values are 0 and at 5 star the value will be again minus 1 by length of the member which is minus 1 by 6 at 5 star and minus 1 by 6 at 6 star okay now coming to the second system coordinate I am applying a unit displacement in the direction of second system coordinate here the second system coordinate is rotation so I am applying a unit rotation at B and other system coordinates are neglected so here only 2 is acting with a unit rotation at B so the member deformation at 1 star will be 0 3 star 2 star and 3 star since they are at B they have unit rotation and 4 star is 0 5 star 0 and 6 star 0 and at 3 third system coordinate when I am applying a unit rotation in the direction of 3 then the member deformation at 1 star 2 star 3 star are all 0 and at 4 star we have value 1 5 star we have the value 1 and at 6 star again 0 so this is how to develop displacement transformation matrix I hope it is clear now I am taking this matrix in decimal format that is a is equal to minus 1 by 4 is 0 0.25 so minus 0 0.25 minus 0 0.25 0 0 and minus 1 by 6 is minus 0.167 so the displacement transformation matrix is obtained and we may also require transpose of this displacement transformation matrix so let us write down the transpose here itself 
Now we are moving to the step number six, that is formation of element stiffness matrix. And we know how to develop element stiffness matrix. We have a ready-made equation or ready-made formula that is element stiffness matrix K star is equal to EI by length of the member into 4, 2, and 2, 4. So here we have length of the member AB is 4, so EI by 4 into 4, 2, 2, 4, which will become EI into 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 1. And at BC, again, we have length 4, so the equation will become, so the element stiffness matrix for BC member is, again, EI into 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 1. And the last element stiffness matrix, that is, at CD, we have the length as 6, so the matrix is 0 0.667, 0 0.333, 0 0.333, and 0 0.667 into EI. So I am keeping all these element stiffness metrics of each member diagonally, and we will get the element stiffness matrix of the structure that is K star, which is equal to 1. 1.5.51 and 1.5.51 and 0.667.333.333 and 0.667 and keeping all these metrics diagonally and we will get a 6 by 6 matrix okay so this is the element stiffness matrix of the structure now step number 7 we have to develop stiffness matrix and we know for developing a stiffness matrix, we have an equation that is displacement transformation matrix transpose into element stiffness matrix of the structure to displacement transpose, displacement trans transformation matrix. So we have K is equal to A transpose into K star into A. And when I multiply all these three matrices, I will get stiffness matrix value as 0.243 minus 0.375 minus 0.167 minus 0.375 and minus 0 0.167 0 0.5 and 1.667 so this is the value of stiffness matrix of the structure now moving to the step 8 here we have to develop force matrix so force matrix means we have to find out the external force acting at the place of each system coordinate. Now let us compare our question and the system coordinates obtained. We have three system coordinates 1, 2 and 3, 1 and 2 at B and 3 at C. But we have only one external force that is 8 kN acting at B, so our force matrix will become 8, 0, and 0. Here at 1, 8 kN is acting, at 2, no external force is acting, so it, the value is 0. At 3, no external force is acting, so the value is again 0. So we get force matrix as P is equal to 8, 0, 0. Now, the step number 9, which is displacement matrix. So, here we have three system coordinates and the displacement developed due to these system coordinates are delta B, theta B and theta C. So, we have the equation for displacement matrix that is minus stiffness matrix inverse into force matrix. So, we have stiffness matrix this one and inverse of this matrix which can be calculated by using scientific calculator so we will get the answer as 5.9 1.038 when i calculate inverse of the matrix by using manual method it is somewhat tedious work so i prefer i suggest you to 
calculate the inverse of the matrix from your scientific calculator which is a very easy method just find out how to find out the inverse of a matrix by using scientific calculator so that you just have to apply the values and you will get the answer okay so after finding out the k inverse and placing this k inverse in this equation then i will get the displacement matrix as 47.28 8.304 and 2.248 so these are the displacement developed in the given frame structure so at the last step we have element forces calculation element force can be calculated by using the equation q is equal to element stiffness matrix into displacement transformation matrix in displaced displacement matrix so we have all the matrix with us just to multiply all these matrix and you will get the value of member force or element force q so this is the final answer of this question and i hope you understand this method thank you